small space. That loads your weight. Everything with me is a lot of this stuff, loading weight for the counter attack. Okay, that means this is loaded for the cross without having to, you know, guys got a bad habit of drawing back and then punching. You're already in position tight for a beautiful counter because it's speed that really kills. One more time. Okay. Okay, guys. So keep that in mind. All right, next, uh, next one. Um, oh, the jet, jet blitz. That is the jet blitz. Okay, it starts with a switch punch. Hey, Ryan, can we lower the music a little bit, please? Ryan, Ryan, can you lower the music, please? Um, let's go with uh, uh, left hand. Okay, you're gonna do a switch punch. You're gonna switch your feet here and go forward. If I'm really doing it, I'm going to be here kind of like in a rhythm and break rhythm. What it is is, is, is it's an attack that starts on like the upbeat music. It's not one, two, one, two. It's one, ding. And that's what GSP's great at with his lead. It's like GSP's lead super different technique, very similar. Okay, you're just going to switch here, switch punch. Then we're going to do a front ball kick to his lower abs, not up high like a TJ and uh, Muay Thai, but this is more like karate stuff. Here, to his lower abs, land into a two, three, okay, and then right hook, you like cover? And then right hook, okay. So yeah, you can cover the punches. So, switch punch. Yeah, do it with me if you want. Switch here, ball kick, abs, you land, power, two, three, and then right hook. Okay, and right hot kicks, for, you, you know, I usually go Muay Thai style out here for power. Okay, if you're a little closer range and you're blasting the guy straight forward, sometimes karate style up the center line and then turning it over at the end is a little bit better. Okay, it depends on your range, guys. Okay, okay if you're not that advanced, don't worry about it. So you're switching your stance, but don't switch in one spot. You're going to switch going forward. Here, so even if you go ahead and cover this, even if he covers it, I knock him back a little bit into the kick, land into the two, three, high kick, right high kick. Okay, so switch punch, jet blitz, fight off rhythm. It should be fast once you get it down. Switch, kick, two, three, right high kick. Okay, with him one more time. Switch, kick, two, three, right high kick. You got it done? Here, kick, two, three, right high kick. Okay, go guys. The jet blitz. Benny the jet blitz. Show me this one. Stop it. You don't have mouth guards yet. You don't know what you're doing. Switch. Yeah, I, I will switch. Kick, two, three. Kick. 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 With power, like Anderson Silva, Vitor Belfort, go in. Okay, go in with power right into his organs. That'll help fold them over for the punches. Circle up, circle up. Okay, next guys. I think most of you, are you guys fairly familiar with slipping a jab, counter jab, like BJ Penn is great at in MMA? Okay, just slowly throw a jab at me. I'm gonna slip to the outside, dipping, okay? Parrying, because I always like to. You, BJ doesn't necessarily, a lot of guys don't, but I figure it's free, I might as well stay safe when I'm tired. Okay, and you're gonna move the left foot in the first two times. It's a series of three we're gonna do. He's gonna jab the first time. I'm gonna slip out here and throw the jab back, and you guys are gonna catch on your gloves, okay? So I'll do that again. He catches on the gloves. I slip to the outside as he punches over here again. That's two. So the first two, you step in, as you always do, like for power on the jab. Okay, here. Bend over, here. You're gonna dip in and towards. Okay, not so much so that you're gonna need a kick or anything, okay? But here, so you're in position and it goes over your shoulder. So one more time, jab, here, okay? There's one, again, two. On the third one, watch what we do. Instead of my left foot moving in, the right foot's gonna do what I call a step out. All right, so the third one, he throws the jab. I do a step out, throw the jab. What am I in position for nice now? <laughs> right cross, I like, I like this. I like taking the chin with a straight. Okay, or like great, great, you know, perfect positioning for a punch. Chuck Liddell, okay, it was Randy Couture. You get this as a boxer, this is what you want all day long. Guess what else it gives you? Weave in, same takedown as before. Or more advanced sweeps and 
Kazushi Waza stuff, Shotokan stuff that Goya Machida does. Okay, so the third one, okay, in the series, you're going to step out. Here, right cross, weave under, tight waist. He really is not going to be able to defend this. Take down, into side control. Start working from there. Okay, so as a series of three, I'll do it one more time. He gives me the jab, step in, counter punch again. Step in, counter punch again. Under. And we're working, we're in dominant position right away. I like getting these angle of attack takedowns because they're energy efficient and I'm landing in side mount. I don't want to spend all right round fighting in the guard. If I get side mount, I've won every match. Grappling, MMA, kudo. If I get side mount, I win. Actually, if I get on top, I win. But I usually get on top and I pass the guard immediately so I don't got to work so dang hard. You want to do it off the takedown. Okay? So one, one. One, two, weave, knee bump. Here, guys. Okay, tight waist, tight. When you grab a tight waist, try and get as low as possible. Pinch your elbows. Pressure here. The head's not way out here anywhere. Pressure with your head and your shoulder. Here. Okay? All right, go. Yeah, the um, let me talk to you a little bit about uh, catch wrestling. I'm going to show grappling from a catch wrestling perspective. Most stuff we're going to do today probably will all be top game stuff. Maybe I'll do one sub from bottom half guard. But on the top, you want to be heavy. You want to make life miserable, okay, for your opponent. I'm talking about when you go to tournaments, maybe not always when you train, unless you got guys that are gung-ho and that's cool. Um, but when you go to tournaments, when you go to a fight, if you guys ever decide to, you know, try and train the main or whatever, you want to make life horrible on your opponent. You want to ride the guy and make life miserable for him. And you want to be heavy, 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 heavy. There's a lot of great jiu-jitsu guys I roll with, purple belts, brown belts even, Guys that are well respected, guys that have great technique, but they they're ba they they're missing some basics that you would find in wrestling and judo, and that is being heavy. And that's the staple of catch wrestling in my mind, is making the guy miserable. Okay, so I'll show some heaviness, but I'll uh, we'll start in your guard. You want to make life heck for the guy. You know, basic inside position here, pinching your elbows together on his hips, stop his movement. Okay, and guys forget that. They reach out here and then they get sucked in arm drags and kimuras and all kinds of stuff because they leave space and they leave open nest. Okay, they get spun in, spun for arm bars. Okay, go for an arm bar. They, you know, I don't care if I go against a black belt. I'm gonna I'm gonna not forget my basics. Is stop his offense. Position, position, position. Just like in boxing, have good position. Don't be caught out of position. That's what wrestling is. That's what grappling is. Pinch his hips off and stop his motion. This is just a very good pointer to have. So even if against I'm against. Really, I've gone against some really, really, really high-level black belt respected guys, and they're not exactly tapping me, you know, in their guard. Maybe after 25, 30 minutes, if they gas me, okay. But it's certainly not like a right away thing. So remember the basics: pinch his hips, that stops all his side-to-side -side motion. Now, if I want to be heavy on this man and make life miserable for him, you can go this position here. I can be just just heavy in here. I could be driving my forehead into him. I can tripod up here. Now I'm putting weight on him. Now I'm not standing up straight so he can back sweep me, grab my heels, but I'm stacked in here, I'm pinching with my knees, and I'm you know, dropping elbows on the guy, and I'm making him carry my weight. I can have my head down here and be doing ground and pound from here. I can, um, a lot of times you'll get a, a guy will then try and extend you, like push, push me away with your legs. Well, one thing that stops that nice is if you're in here and he starts pushing you away, you lock it on the collarbone. Okay, ref didn't see it. But he's going to stop pushing away, because the harder he pushes away, the more he's ripping off his own collar. Okay? So um, you can work pressure points. You can, you can be heavy in the guard, you guard even. You just have to watch out for certain submissions. I can be putting, writing a weight on here. And I'm going to even get a tap out against the guys here with my body weight alone, because I'm putting the bone in the right position. If I was stupid here, he might push me for an arm triangle. Okay? You can't do that, but I know what's up. I'm going to put my elbow down tip this way and put the blade into the throat and support weight on top of it and drag down. You can do what uh, I call a jawbreaker. You can come underneath here, roll your forehead here, here, and drag it in the legs. 
Now that's very light power on my legs. Imagine if I squatted and pushed all my four. Yeah, I can just roll under this, right? Roll under here. Roll. Roll drive. Now I can do stuff with pressure points. Driving in here, making life miserable, choking the guy. And this is all on his guard. This is all in his dominant, you know, guard position. He thinks he's going to tap me out. Now, if I'm reaching around his head, if he's a great guy, watch him taking his foot off the cage to spin for the armbar. If I'm reaching over here, he might spin for an armbar on my right arm. Start working this way. Yeah, so you can't let him hip out here, of course. Okay, guys, so you got to be aware when you're reaching around stuff. Okay, you got to be careful. But if I'm in here, trapping in here, chicken wing elbow here, palm strike here, can't open her there, into an elbow, can't open her again, into an elbow, ground and pound, tripod up, ground and pound in here, looking for my pop-up passes and stuff to then pass the guard. So that's just being heavy and nastiness in the guard. Collarbones, pressure points, all that stuff. You should, you should learn. You don't always have to do in training, but you should learn. Let's talk half guard a little bit. It's got to be half guard. Everything applies. Being heavy is about, you want to fold over the guy like a sack of rice. Too many people are on a guy, just, just posted on their knee, supporting their own weight up like a chair. You don't want to be supporting your weight. You want to be driving through this man, really through his ifoid process and his chest, make it hard for him to breathe. Okay, here's typical people inside of him. I'll go back to that part. They're just here posting, squeezing my neck a lot. I, I kind of like don't like that if like they're trying to trying to snake choke me and squeeze with all their might when they're in a position like, that they couldn't get a tap out with technique, they're in half guard, they're in guard, you know what I mean? They're not, they're not in a dominant position, but they, they're a beginner. Then maybe I go thumbs in the armpits to pressure points, I get on top of them. You know, this guy starts wrapping around my head or can over me or something like that. I don't like this kind of stuff, then I'll still go, I'll just go in here. And eventually it takes away the energy. And I can lock down here. And I can go on those things here. And if he starts playing press points, I can go behind him here there. And then I can move the guy. And then maybe it sets up stuff. You see? Um, so you have to know how to be me. And on the pressure points, not that you gotta always play, don't play with this stuff like all the time, but you should know it, because defend it. This one, go to the ball. It's about up there. This one, go to the front. Up at that in that angle. Those are kind of the main ones. I use in the armpits a lot. If the guy's just squeezing me, I'll just put my fingers in the armpits and his strength, it kind of like bleeds his power meter down like a video game. After about 20 seconds, just putting them in there, I'm not even driving with energy, lowers his power by a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Get out here. <laughs> okay, so here, this one, the cheek. I use that a lot with my chin. Okay, go. Go up this way. Okay, this one. Okay, you can like manipulate the guy because of that. There's there's one under the mat. Well, not everyone's good with this one so much here. And then of course you got here. Of course you got here. And, and you, can, you can lift with, the, with the, that there or the nose. You know you can help lift the chokes. The guys really defending a rear short choke or a naked choke. You know then you, you can manipulate them a little bit. So that's part of catch wrestling's meanness. You know, catch wrestling is not just for MMA, it's for self-defense, it was for Connie's, if guys challenged you, guys were really swinging, no rules. It was basically Vail Tudo in America in the early 1900s, okay? You know, and then I'm Greek, so it goes back to pancreation. It's all good stuff, but it all goes back, you know, a long time. Uh, let's talk some uh, submissions from side mount. Turn on your back. Here, let's switch sides. You guys know the, commonly called the Kimura? You guys know this one? Okay, call it double wrist lock and catch wrestling. Kimura's great. I like to, I, I just do it the typical way a lot of times by stepping in one quick motion on the balls of my feet. And, and whatever Ryan's taught you is great. And I do a power motion and push with my hip and try to sit on his head. That way he's dominated right away. So I use my body as one unit. That's one way of doing it, okay, is here. It's, you know, you can rock and you can go and step and that stuff. But I like to push and turn. Now, Frank Burks, who's, you know, once he was beat by Brock, so he doesn't like that way so much because if the guy's a great wrestler, he might turn in if he's really super strong. But I still like that way to be dominating him on the side so I can work on the arm as opposed to him on the back. But I'm going to show you a different way. 
Okay, that's just a little segue. Different way, nastier way. So when you're down here, you can C grip and then throttle him. Throttle like a motorcycle throttle. If you can see, I don't, I don't know, maybe some stuff pops out like muscles, it stretches ligaments and tendons just by supinating the joint. Oh, he's tapping just from that. <laughs> out here. Then if I work my submission, okay, and that's as far as I'll take it because guess what? I can break his forearm. Not only am I attacking the elbow, like a typical uh, entangled arm lock, Udigarami style, and shoulder, but by twisting out, throttle out like a motorcycle, you want to go fast, it's a little more technical. And when you're on the feet, uh, you know, same thing, peeling a tight waist lock, same here, come on. Same thing, you know, Sakurama style. The guy's got this and I'm peeling for hands. Okay, if I get in here and I get to the position, if I can twist out, I can move this guy better because it's twisted out. Okay, if I want to go for rolling, double wrist lock, rolling Kimura like Carl Parisian style, you know, that's one of the things that's good by going here, turning it out, and then here. Now I go here and rip it on the street. I mean, rip stuff. That's a, that's a catch to break stuff. Here, slam his head in the wall, then knee his head, and then spin him through the rabbit hole. Whatever you want to do. <laughs> Where am I going? Okay, side mount again. Okay, so that's the double wrist lock, aka Kimura, but more catch wrestling style by twisting it out. Uh, some people, you, you can really see, the guy I did it too the other day, you can see that it stretches the ligaments and stuff. Same thing with the top wrist lock, aka Americana, paintbrush, um, key lock, I don't know what you call it in the school, there's a billion and one names, okay? This is typical, staple into the elbow, here, stack down to the ribs, okay, he's not that flexible, and then elbow up and hand against the mat. You can do the same thing, twist out, okay, here. I'm not even with the hand on the mat now, because I'm attacking the joint, and, and catch wrestling is kind of about understanding the joints more than particular moves, understanding the dynamics, so you can kind of make submissions up on the fly. Okay, you feel the difference. You feel, yeah. you feel the difference. You've been <laughs> hitting here all day. Okay, so, out. Um, okay, let's break and just do those two. Really fast, okay. Yeah. See, there's a big difference. Just do it from this way and lift. Have like the same angle and do everything the same without twisting it out. Okay. Just do it normal way. See if you can do it without putting your leg over my head. <laughs> you just got see? You see what the difference is? Then I'll be put in a bad position with you just going to turn on top of Yeah, it's a big difference. I mean, you, I, I wasn't trying any harder. But here, it's already ready. Let's go to the board. See, you don't have to step over my head as deep as you do this way. See, you can just work this way. And I'll try and get a little pressure over my head, your leg over my head, your head. You know, just, just step out to here. Oh, twist the wrist. It takes a while to get the feel for it. If you're a beginner, guys, no matter what style you're doing, keep the hand on the mat, lift the elbow. Keep, you know, I, keep the hand on the mat here. Okay. You'll see me lock people out like this because I understand how the joint works. When you're a beginner, let's go ahead and keep the hand on the mat. I call this a roller lock. I get guys in this lock. That's without your typical double wrist lock. That's a little more. This was taught to me by a Pancrase fighter back in uh, 1998. Okay. Also, knowing once you understand those dynamics, ah, I'm here, sorry. <laughs> Next stretch, collarbone break. These are catches. Something about. Okay. <laughs> okay, see, I can. Go here and stretch this out. There's other submissions that work. The uh, here, if you had north south, or you're kind of hugging me, just go light. Okay, here, these other submissions, same way, the same direction. Okay, just by hooking this in here, working. Okay. So um, you can play with that if you can remember it, how to pull the head sideways if you want with the same thing. Uh, next, the uh, windshield wiper, okay? A lot of times I'll land in side mount here or I'm looking for leg locks on the legs or in judo, this is a position 
Okay, reverse case of Katami, reverse sit out. Um, you know, also, Tenth Planet style does that a lot, is twister side control, they call it. Even if you're not, if you're down here, a lot of times I'm looking for leg locks. I'll show you a leg lock, cool leg lock in a minute. You, instead of head and arm, typical control position, sometimes you land here, or I'll weave this in here and then swim it. He's done. Elbow down to the mat. Oh, yeah, we just slip. that one the other day where you can choke him. Yeah. Underneath his head. Yeah. So, under, here, windshield wiper, here. I get this one just in flowing when you're, when you're fast paced and, and, and going, when I'm passing the guard and stuff. These are the stuff you should just flow to and, and feel. So, um, windshield wiper, and what else do I want to give you guys today? Okay, arm trap. Under the head. A lot of times I'm here. You take the hand that's under the head and trap the armpit. Turk, Turk him on his side a little bit, then punch his face. <laughs> Anyone remember that in a UFC that fight? That was Brock Lesnar versus Frank Mir. Thank you, sir. Exactly. And boy, great jujitsu guy getting beat up. Bam. Well, I might want to submit the guy too. So for leverage, I start creeping this down towards his elbow. Now it's a lat stretch. Okay, it's in the muscles in the back. He probably feels nice and tight. That's not enough. <laughs> Bicep forward, forearm forward, neck crank, and lat stretch. Let's say he was flexible, which he's not, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> Left foot, here, trap here. And now, I don't even have to use arm, I can just use shit. Then you have polarize them. Shit. Oh, and then if I want to work the arm, the <laughs> counter way, or I wanted to work the arm, you know, if it ended up this way in a straight arm bar, I can go here. Well, I'm looking for other opponents for, for combatives. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, one more here. So, uh, remember this one? Here, okay. Under, armpit. A lot of times maybe you're trying to fish for this. You know, you're fishing up high, but you're, you can't get anything. Bam, 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 bam. Chicken wing elbows. Okay, if they're allowed. Here, stretch that boy. Here, neck crank and lat stretch. If you need more, trap. Here, and now it's just knee in. Okay, neck crank. It's a good tap. Good okay. <laughs> or, or yell or whatever. <laughs> See, just in the armpit. If you wanted to, go straight in on our heart. You could, you know. And I had, I had a guy do that in a jujitsu class right in line after he saw us. A video of me just teaching this. Maybe the neck crank's not allowed in a grappling tournament, so you're just to here, and then you're setting up the armbar, maybe, on the near side armbar. Okay, so you get, can use things in a flow. So let's do the windshield wiper neck crank very slowly, and then let's do the trap to here. Pretend to bash him a little bit, slide it down. Realize I can stretch this way back, might get the tap. Forearm, elbow, forward, might get more like the neck crank, both at the same time. That's the one I go for here. And then if you want it, I need to stretch out. Okay, work this. Work. Okay, go guys. Very careful in the neck. Just the chest. Bring me Let's pull it slowly, Come back around the head. Let me get my armpit. Yeah. Oh, now get your knees into my back. Slide down and elbow forward. Drop your shoulder forward. Slow, slow, slow. And as you stretch your arm back, same time. Yeah, pull, pull, pull my arm towards them. Push it back. Yep. And then push, push forward and pull my arm back. Yeah, not done. Yeah. 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 to stretch a man's ankle in itty bitty pieces. I call us the catch ankle locks. So catch wrestling name gets out there a little bit. Um, so some old catch guys might have called it a reverse toe hold. Okay, because it's the reverse angle of a figure four toe hold. You know, or a catcher, um, a farmer uh, toe hold. This one was taught to me uh, by Pat Grace Fighter back in about 98 or 99 era, I think 98. When I'm on a guy here, here, whatever, I can't really get something. I'm always looking 
If I can't attack the high line, just like in striking guys, what do we learn at that cut kick? You attack the low line. You know, if, if, if something's going to be in blocked, go somewhere else. You know, attack where the defense is not there. Flank the guy, you know, attack from the back. So if I, you know, having trouble choking him, he's just hugging me so, you know, I can't get the, I can't get the arms, I can't get a double wrist lock, anything. You can elbow strike this guy this way. Grab his thumbs this way. And I submitted him with one arm, one arm. But in reality, he was tough. He wouldn't tap in a fight until I added the second arm. And then I broke it. The elbow is on the shin for leverage. I'm at the top of the toes for leverage. I pull and push. It depends where it ends up. The other hand can support, and it's there. Now, I also get this in half guard.